Interesting, isn't it? This is the V15 Pro from Vivo and in today's video, let's unbox it and take a quick look. Hey guys, Ash here from C4 Retech and let's get started. If you do end up liking this video, please don't forget to turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon. So here's the box the V15 Pro comes in, opening it up, there's another box here. Here we get the SIM tool, regular leaflets, a hard case, quite solid, unlike the ones we regularly see. We then have the V15 Pro itself, taking it out of its protective plastic. The back looks nice, let's turn it on and try it with that case, fits well, the back still manages to shine through. We then have a pair of earphones with a regular connector, so yay, headphone jack seems to be alive and well. What's not yay is the micro USB cable, no type C. Finally, we have an 18 watt dual engine fast charger here. So let's now turn our attention back to the V15 Pro. So the first thing you're probably gonna notice is this back. It looks great. That triple camera setup looks quite solid too. I can't really put my finger on it, but I quite like how it looks here. The 8.2 millimeter thickness, the 185 gram weight, the V15 Pro feels quite good in hand. Now one of the highlights here is that 6.39 inch AMOLED panel up front. This is an uninterrupted panel. No notches, no punch holes, nothing of that sort. It's just all display. The bezels are super minimal. The aspect ratio here is 19.5 by 9 and the resolution full HD+. The colors are punchy, the viewing angle's great, black's deep as expected from an AMOLED panel. Now how Vivo's managed to maintain the all-screen look is by going for this pop-up camera. We've seen such an implementation before on the Nex and it's fast enough but is as cool as always. This is a 32 megapixel f2 selfie shooter by the way. Now this AMOLED panel has also allowed Vivo to incorporate a fingerprint scanner under the display. This is the 5th gen under display fingerprint scanner and it feels faster and snappier than ever before. The headphone jack and primary microphone are also found up top along with that pop-up camera. Other placements include the power and volume keys to the right, a Google Assistant button to the left. This button, while not remappable by default, can be turned off. Thank you, Vivo. The micro SD tray is also located here. To the bottom, we have the primary mic, speaker, the dual SIM tray, and the micro USB port. That's probably the one thing I wish Vivo had changed. Type-C would have been great. Anyway, to the back, we have a triple camera setup, a 48 megapixel primary. This is the Samsung ISOCELL GM1 sensor. We've seen it in the past and it's quite impressive, though not quite 48 megapixels. This is paired with a f1.8 lens. We then have a 5 megapixel depth sensor and an 8 megapixel ultra wide sensor paired with a f2.4 lens. As you can see, the pictures here are quite good. These are 12 megapixel shots. AI scene deduction is present and works well. The wide angle camera was surprisingly good too. The dynamic range on both were excellent. 48 megapixel interpolated shots can be achieved from the pro mode if you want that. The 32 megapixel selfie camera comes with portrait lighting options and you can't really complain about that implementation either. The regular shots were quite detailed as well. Now under the hood, Vivo's gone with the 11 nanometer Snapdragon 675 chip, the first phone in India to sport it. The 675 is in some ways better than even the Snapdragon 710, which makes this quite a powerful offering. This variant comes with 6 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of onboard storage. All this backed up by a 3700 mAh battery. My first impressions of OneTouch OS 9, which happens to be built on Android 9, were mostly positive. It is still a little too iOS-y for my liking, with control center and all that, but the interface as a whole felt snappy. That's expected given the Snapdragon 675 uses two Cryo 460 cores, which are based on Cortex-A76. Something that even the Snapdragon 845 lacks, given it uses Cryo 385 cores, which are built on A75, though it gets four. Now, even with gaming, the Adreno 612 seems solid, good performance here. Now, given this chip, the pop-up camera, a triple camera solution, including a 48 megapixel primary, the all-screen AMOLED panel, fifth generation in-display fingerprint scanner, I expect the 6128 to be priced around the 30,000 rupee mark. At this price, it might be a very competent all-round offering. Most powerful phone? Probably not, but the V15 Pro might just end up being the most feature-packed phone in this segment. It's early days, I'm gonna have to test it out more in depth before I draw a solid conclusion, but so far, I'm liking what I'm seeing. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Also, like, dislike based on what you feel, subscribe and turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon. 
Share the video with friends and family if you can. And thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name is Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.